My name is Dr. Gita Ganesh, a neurologist and multiple sclerosis specialist at the Norton Neuroscience Institute Hussing Family Multiple Sclerosis Center. Today, we are going to discuss bladder issues and multiple sclerosis. This presentation is part of a three-part series on the topic of urinary symptoms and multiple sclerosis. To find more videos in the series, go to nortonhealthcare.com backslash neuroeducation. Multiple sclerosis can have a multitude of symptoms, but one of the most common is bladder issues. Today, we will talk about how it's important to discuss these symptoms with a neurologist. As part of this discussion, we will describe the normal process of urinating and the most common ways in which MS impacts this process. Additionally, we will highlight typical urinary symptoms experienced by those with MS and how a neurologist assesses this problem. Lastly, we will review treatments for bladder problems and why referrals are made to urology and physical therapy specialists. Urinary problems can be embarrassing to talk about, but the topic is incredibly important. Bladder symptoms are actually very common among patients living with MS. Up to 80% of patients report bladder symptoms at the time of diagnosis, and up to 96% of patients report urinary symptoms by 10 years after the diagnosis. It's important to discuss these symptoms with your neurologist before it's too late. Uncontrolled bladder symptoms can lead to serious infections of the urinary tract and blood. They have also been associated with skin breakdown in patients who are immobile. In order to understand how the bladder is impacted by multiple sclerosis, it is important to review the normal flow of urine. Receptors in the bladder wall are stimulated by stretch as the bladder fills. This information is then relayed to the brain via the spinal cord. The signals reach an important part of the brainstem called the pontine micturition center, or PMC. As the bladder fills, the PMC triggers one of two responses, storage or voiding. In the case of storage, signals from the PMC tell the bladder to relax and store. These signals also tell the urethra to close. The urethra is the tube through which urine exits the body. The process prevents leakage of urine. Once the bladder reaches capacity, the PMC signaling then triggers voiding or release of urine. In this case, signals traveling down the spinal cord tell the detrusor, a muscle in the bladder wall, to contract and push urine out. Signals also tell the urethra to relax. Urine is then able to flow out of your body. There are many ways in which the process of urinating can become impaired by faulty neurological connections. For example, the detrusor, or the muscle of the bladder wall, may incorrectly contract during bladder filling, and this problem can be associated with leakage. Urine outflow can be blocked. The urethra can incorrectly contract when urine is being pushed out of the bladder. Urine can also be retained if the bladder muscle is too weak or if the bladder doesn't properly contract to push urine out. People living with MS can describe many urinary symptoms as a result of these problems. Urgency is the sudden strong desire to urinate that cannot be deferred. Frequency is the feeling of voiding too often. Urge incontinence is involuntary leakage of urine accompanied by an urgent desire to urinate. Nocturia is needing to wake up one or more times a night to urinate. Urinary retention is the inability to fully void urine. The volume of urine that remains in the bladder after a person believes he or she has fully voided will be at least 150 milliliters. Hesitancy is difficulty initiating the urine stream resulting in delay in voiding onset. Straining is when additional muscular effort is needed to initiate, maintain, or accelerate the urine stream. The term overactive bladder is characterized by the presence of one of four symptoms, urgency, urge incontinence, frequency, and nocturia. It is the primary cause of urinary incontinence in patients with MS. A neurologist will perform several assessments when it comes to bladder symptoms. These evaluations help us determine if referrals are needed. Poor cognition, difficulty with activities of daily living, difficulty with transferring to the commode, and problems walking can all prevent a person living with MS from getting to the bathroom in a timely manner. Diet and fluid intake should be discussed to determine if behavioral modifications are needed. 
Other questions will focus on episodes of incontinence, frequency, and recurrent urinary tract infections. The medication list should be reviewed for any potential drugs associated with urinary frequency. The neurologist can also point out other medical problems that lead to fluid overload, such as congestive heart failure. The point of this history taking is to determine several items. First, it is incredibly important to make sure a urinary tract infection is not the cause of your symptoms or making symptoms worse. Once infection has been ruled out, the first line of treatment is behavioral modification. Medications are considered if behavioral modification is not effective. Simultaneously, a patient can be referred to several specialists, including a pelvic floor physical therapist and also a urologist or urogynecologist. A gastroenterologist may also be involved if stool impaction is playing a role. As stated earlier, the first line of treatment for urinary incontinence symptoms in MS is behavioral modification once infection and urinary retention have been ruled out. Examples of behavioral modification are the following. Moderate drinking, for example, no more than four to six ounces of fluid per hour. Reduce bladder irritants such as alcohol, caffeine, citrus juices, and artificial sweeteners. Cut off fluids two to three hours before bedtime. Change the timing of medications, such as diuretics, using guidance from the prescribing physician. Schedule voiding times throughout the day to avoid urgent episodes. And men and women can perform Kegel exercises to strengthen the pelvic floor. Behavioral modification may not work for everyone. There are several medications that could be tried before referral to a urologist or urogynecologist. Anticholinergic medications, and specifically those that promote smooth muscle relaxation, can be used for overactive bladder. Oxybutynin, tolteridine, and solafenacin are examples of medications in these categories. Alpha adrenergic blockers, such as tamsulosin, can be used for impaired bladder emptying. Patients who have painful bladder spasms may benefit from muscle relaxers, such as baclofen. The reason why behavioral modification is sometimes promoted over medications is because of the side effects of many of these medications. Constipation, dry mouth, and even mental status changes can be associated with anticholinergic medications. Alpha-blocking agents can cause dizziness, drowsiness, hypotension, and episodes of passing out. Patients placed on these medications are often started at the lowest dose. The medications are titrated slowly because of these side effects. Some patients may be referred to a physical therapist or PT who is specifically trained in pelvic floor dysfunction. The goal of pelvic floor physical therapy is to regain control of the bladder by strengthening pelvic floor muscles. Some patients with neurogenic bladder dysfunction may not benefit from physical therapy. More information on pelvic floor physical therapy will be presented in another lecture. Reasons for referring to a urologist or urogynecologist include the following. Failure of behavioral modifications and physical therapy to adequately control symptoms, recurrent urinary tract infections, and symptoms suggesting urinary retention. It is possible that more invasive options are needed, and a urologist is trained in evaluating for these options, including botulinum toxin injections, sacral neuromodulation, peripheral nerve stimulation, catheterization, or urinary diversion. A more in-depth discussion on urology referrals will occur in another lecture. Thank you for listening to this presentation. Remember, urinary symptoms are very common in MS. Make sure to talk to your neurologist to start the appropriate evaluation process. This presentation is part of a three-part series on the topic of urinary symptoms and multiple sclerosis. To find more videos in this series, go to nortonhealthcare.com backslash neuroeducation. <music>